Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. Today I've got another chainsaw hack where I'm going to build something that I can use out here in the shop to help me stay cool because it sure has been a hot summer out here in the workshop. So let's head on over to the workbench and let's get started.
So I was really excited because I made it this far into the project and I thought I was ready to do a test run and see how well everything worked. And I ran into a design flaw. So let me zoom in here and show you what went wrong. All right, so this whole project revolves around this piece of an angle grinder. And this is from a little $10 Harbor Freight angle grinder. And here's the problem is this shaft wobbles. It will wobble back and forth, and that's because there's no support on this end of the shaft. Now when it was in the angle grinder, it had the motor up here, and it supported that part of the shaft, and it wasn't an issue when it was in the, the angle grinder. But when I have it mounted here, and I have a big heavy sprocket here, and a chain pulling this all around, this will start to shift this way, and then it just starts to wobble. So it's that this isn't going to work with this piece, and I didn't really want to start cutting up good angle grinders to see if there was maybe a different way to do this. And then just by chance, I noticed that if I turn the angle grinder piece this way, that it fits perfectly in this hole that I cut. And that was totally by chance. I did not plan on that. It just worked out that it, it, that it worked that way. And I also have a sprocket left over from the chop saw project that will fit. It's the same size as the arbor on this angle grinder. So it doesn't require a shim and it looks like everything will work and I won't have to remake a whole lot of pieces. The only problem is if I turn it this way, you can see that this sprocket sticks out a little bit too far this way. So I need to move it in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece off right here, put a little bit longer piece to move everything in a little bit, and then hopefully that will fix this problem and I can continue on with the project. Now, of course, I'm going to do that off camera because I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me make the same piece twice. And here it is all completed. Everything fit into place quite well. I've got the angle grinder attachment uh, rotated 90 degrees so that the larger piece is now being driven by the chain. And then the smaller shaft, this is going to drive our blender blades. And I was afraid I was going to have to remake this chain guard, but I was able to cut this piece off and bend it and then move it up a little bit and re-weld it on there and everything worked out great. So it didn't, it wasn't a whole lot of extra effort to make this uh, with the piece rotated 90 degrees. So now all I need to do is come up with a way to spin the blades of the blender. And if you look here on the bottom, there's this little spline pattern. So what I'm going to do is just take this piece off and go over to the belt sander and grind that same pattern in the shaft. And then that way the blender will go on top and it will make this connection and it'll spin the blades around. And to keep everything from going wobbly and moving all over the place, I came up with this little 3D printed bracket that has the same bolt holes as the angle grinder. So I'm going to just screw that into place there and then put the blender on top like so. All right, so I've got the 3D printed part mounted on here and I've got the little spline pattern cut into the shaft. I also added a little bit of 100 mile an hour tape and that's just black duct tape for those of you that don't know what 100 mile an hour tape is. But I added that along the inside here and that's just to give the blender uh, something to grip to because the inside of this plastic was a little slick and it, it tended to want to spin in here. So the, that uh, tape just makes it a little bit more grippy and harder for the blender to spin around in here. So now the only thing left to do is make some cold beverages with it.
Not bad, not bad at all. Well, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me that big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button and be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.